Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to properly use a displacement texture from a polygon material in Cinema 4D with Redshift. Before we get started, let's take a look at the material we'll be using. It's Ground Asphalt Broken 001 and is easily one of my favorite ground textures here at Polygon. Um, it's brilliant for demonstrating this displacement, which is why I picked it. <laughs> um, I've already got the 4K version saved to my hard drive and I'll include a link um, below the video. As a note, uh, I would recommend getting the, the 4K version if you're going to be following along because with displacement you really do want as much detail from the texture as possible. So let's take a look at what it is we're going to be doing. You've probably heard of a bump map before which is used to artificially give the impression of height in a material. Well a displacement map is different. It is used to literally deform the object based on the values of the texture with the black areas being the deep crevices and the white areas being the peaks. It results in a far more realistic material. Okay, so let's look at how we replicate that effect in Redshift. Um, first of all, the scene that we'll be using is this plane, basically, <laughs> uh, and a dome light, and that is about it. I'll also be using the uh, the, phys the, sorry, the perspective camera here as our as our main rendering camera. So to begin with, let's bring in our material. Now I've covered using the material converter in a previous uh, video, which I will link below this one. Um, but for now, let's get our ground asphalt broken material. Ooh, bring it in and hit convert. And that's loaded in the material, which we can now drag to the plane to assign it. Okay, um, first thing I'll do is just up the tiling a little bit because we'll, be, uh, we'll be getting quite close to the ground here. So we're gonna want it tiled up. And then I'll bring us in nice and close, and we'll use that as kind of a point of reference as what the uh, what material looks like by default. And I'm not expecting any miracles here. Okay, let's hit render and see what we get. So yeah, as you can see, <laughs> not exactly the uh, the effect we're after. Quite a quite a flat looking material. Um, clearly a, a nice PBR material. You can see the the different levels of uh, of reflection and, and uh, shadows being created by the normal maps and whatnot, but for a material like this, it's, it, you need more than that. You need displacement. So let's take a look at how we achieve this. First, let's inspect the material itself, and you'll see. Once I make it a bit bigger, there we go. That the the material converter has brought in a displacement texture and connected up a displacement mapping node. Um, so we we have we have displacement. So why isn't it looking good? And very simply, it's because we don't have the geometry to work with. This is just a flat plane, which is probably subdivided about 20 times. So these these kind of big blocks here are pretty much the, the size of the, the polygons that the displacement can work with, which isn't enough. So what we need to do is tessellate um, or subdivide this plane to give us more uh, geometry, yeah? Because once we've got more geometry, the, the displacement will then have something that it can actually displace. So to do that, we, we're going to right mouse button on this plane here, go down to Redshift Tags, and then add in a Redshift Object Tag, like so. And that gives you a bunch of different sort of uh, additional options for the uh, that are specific to Redshift. And the one we want is Geometry. So we're going to hit this override button, and this will enable tessellation and displacement, or it'll, it'll enable us to enable them, I should say. And I'm going to turn them both on. So we've now turned on tessellation and displacement. Um, and I think by default the settings shouldn't be too bad. We'll probably need to adjust them a little bit. Um, definitely the displacement scale. Uh, scale. Um, but let, let's take it one step at a time. So with those two enabled, let's see if uh, if our result's any different. And the simple answer would be not much. There's clearly a little bit of displacement going on, um, but not very much. <laughs> so. Now it's time to start affecting these scales. Now it took me a little bit of uh, fiddling around to realize you really do have to, to up these by quite a bit. So I'm gonna turn the maximum displacement up to about 50 and the displacement scale up to about 20, like so. And then uh, we'll, we'll give that a render and see, see what we get. Now that's starting to get there. If you compare that to the previous one, it's definitely starting to, to come away from the ground now. Um, so we just want to up that by, I'm going to double what I just did, turn it to 50 actually. Um, and I'm also going to up the subdivisions just a little bit, um, about 5 there, 
no, sorry, that one you want lower. Um, turn up to about nine. So th this is um, saying that the, the the maximum amount of subdivision and this minimum edge length is um, this is basically adaptive subdivision. So the further away from the camera you get, the less subdivision it will use, and it uses the edge length as a kind of as a guide to that. Um, so with these settings changed, we should get a pretty nice result. Let's have a look. And there we go. That is that is definitely more like it. Um, that is a really nice displaced material. And the the thing to to take away from this is, it will always take a couple of renders to to get that kind of sweet spot for each material. Because the settings I've used here would be hideous on say a, a wooden floor or some some bathroom tiles. Um, you you need to adjust the displacement to the the height of the the material in question. Um, another thing to bear in mind is also the impact that the, the 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 increased tessellation and displacement will have on your rendering performance. Yeah, um, not just the rendering times, but also the amount of memory that it uses. So it's often it's often a case of juggling it uh, for your scene. Obviously, we're just working on a single plane here, so I didn't really have to pay too much attention to it. But if you've got a scene that's already pretty taxing on your computer and then you start in, uh, adding in serious amounts of displacement um, you, you will run into troubles so uh, so do bear that in mind so in summary we've taken a material from polygon.com brought it into cinema 4d using our material converter played around with redshift's uh, object tag to give us some more geometry to work with and adjust the strength of our displacement and then rendered it out in redshift